Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Oh, there's a gator on the loose in the neighborhood. A gator, James. I know. Come on. It's so small. Is it? Is it small? It's pretty small. Like I when would, you think of gator, like a gator. It's four feet. Yeah. It's four feet is what it is, James. Okay. So, I mean, I can go out and punch it. I feel like I could go punch that gator in the face. Yeah. I had a, fuck, man, we've got a crazy story on Drinking Bros about a guy stabbing an alligator with a kitchen knife. Um, and look, you, you can you can say whatever you want at home. Until that problem comes to your front door, you don't know what you'd do. Right. But what I do know is this. After the hurricane, there was a rumor going around that there was an alligator loose in our neighborhood and that it had driven it out of the swamps of, of wherever. And now it's in the neighborhood. And I thought it was an old wives' tale. You know? Oh, really? I took, uh, I took my, my, my son, my boy, my brethren, the, the, the boy who came from my loins. Your son. He's not your brother. Yeah. My, no, my brethren. Your brethren? My brethren. Uh, my, my boy who came that... from my loins. I'm not sure if you're using that right. I feel like I am. Okay. My two-legger, you know? My boy. Okay. Uh, took him down. Sure. To because there's a few little man-made ponds in our in our neighborhood, right? Yeah, we have a quarry. Ah, uh, do we? Do we? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we don't have a quarry. You've never been to a quarry in your life. What is that? Uh, you goddamn, you goddamn a idiot! Southern, a couple southern boys from the neighborhood. No, it's not that. a quarry. A uh, quarry is a big, big thing. We got a couple man-made ponds up in this bitch in a in a, in a creek. Okay. We got a creek. We got a little creek water. And I uh, took him out after the hurricane. And I was like, look, we're going to go look for this gator. Right. You know, strapped up. Uh, had my EDC on me. And uh, flashlight went out and looked for this fucker. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, like we're part of the magic or whatever. I didn't see it. Mm, Long story it. short, I got didn't it. see it. Right. Got it. Got back in the golf cart, went home. I dismissed it after that. This sure. has been seven or eight months at this point. I was like, ah, come on, dude. And you know, I've heard other people in the neighborhood talk about the gator. Mm-hmm. And they were like, and they named it Florence. Florence the gator after, after oh, the hurricane. I like yeah. It. So they were like, oh. Flo. Yeah. You, yeah. You, phew, let's not go flow. I've heard it. All I, all I hear is when you say flow, it's, I it's know. heavy, mm-hmm. heavy periods, mm-hmm. um, chunky periods, heavy flow. Yeah, uh, I got a real heavy flow. Yeah. yeah, sorry if I'm being a little rude today. I got a heavy flow. Yeah, you a bloodhound? Yeah, <laughs> you part of the bloodhound gangs? You. Um, so I, I I I dismissed it. I didn't believe it. I was, I, you know, I chalked it up as a Loch Ness monster. Sure, fake a news. Nessie, fake news. If you if you mm-hmm. will, mm. and then. Uh, I'm at the, I'm at the pool and this little kid's talking shit about Whoa. this alligator. Yeah, he's like, Whoa. oh yeah, you, this alligator's here. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, it is here. And I was like, if you get too close, it's gonna chew both your arms off right in front of your mom because she's not gonna be able to save you. Right. And he was like, it's not real. It's not real. Whatever. And I heard this like through the water. Uh-huh. You know. I don't know what that noise sounds like on the audio show, but if you can tune into to YouTube and subscribe to the video show, you can see what I was doing with it. Yeah, sounds weird, but go ahead. So uh, I'm with, uh, again, my boy, my brethren. Mm. And he's like, Dad, what's that noise? And I was like, let's go check it out. Go down to the, the, the man-made pond, right? Sure enough, boom. See these two guys. Sure. Onesie so you saw twosie. The alligator. I saw the eyes. Okay. Uh, of the gator. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, man, it could be a log. Right. Wasn't a log. It was a four foot gator. Florence was real. And so I'm there 
with my, my boy, you know, the one who came from my loins, my brethren, first in line for the throne. Yep. And uh, then this other kid, right, this little, this little whip tart, mm-hmm. this little cocksure kid, mm-hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know who he is. I don't know who the kid is. But uh, he saw it and he started shitting his pants, you know? Right, and he, he ran was for the hill. Mr. Tough Guy. Sure. So a four-footer comes out. With a beak like that, with a snout like that, mm-hmm. and uh, all of a sudden he turns and runs, cuts and runs is what they call it in the biz. Mm-hmm. Um, I could, you can just, I could hear it streaming, you know. Yep, the pee. No, the poop. Yep. Okay. Because it was not solid. You see a four foot gator, you're not, you're not shitting out solid turds. Mm-mm. It is a stream shooting out, right? Sure. And uh, my my boy though was he was like oh man he starts getting closer to the water oh yeah and I'm like yo yo that is not your friend yeah. alligators hey, buddy. are not your you friend. are gator bait yeah yeah so I was like let's uh, let's hop on back we'll we'll grab a couple picks mm-hmm. you know to take back to you but let's hop on back you know what I'm saying sure uh, we're we're all good I like on, that. on I like that. becoming a, a young Steve Irwin at the age of five right mm, so I you know I, I, I take him back we take some pics or whatever and then my buddy uh, Nick comes down and he goes see that gator and I was like yeah yeah so I saw, yeah. I saw the gator and he goes yeah. shit man my cousin wrestles alligators and I was like what yeah, yeah in and Florida he, yeah yeah in Florida and he goes man He's like, he's almost lost his arm like two or three times. Had to have been air, airlifted to Miami Hospital. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, it's pretty cool to watch it, you know? But uh, it's just it's one of those things. And I, I just stopped him. And it was finally the right time in my life for, for this line. If you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. Oh, Bamo. And that's what I said to him. Bamo, yeah, that's yeah, what I said to yeah. Him, you know? And he appreciated it. Yeah, got a got a hearty chuckle because you always hear that and you're like, "Come on, man!" Uh, and you always wonder who do, who does that type of shit. Right. Nick's cousin does it. Okay. And he's a he's a gator wrestler and like doesn't work a day in his life because he's doing what he loves. Sure, Jabe's. Um, sure. But uh, an old man came out of his house, you know, towards the end after I was snapping some pics on my phone, and he goes, uh, "You guys." You guys talking about that gator? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're talking about the fucking gator, man. Was he cutting an apple with a I, I, look, I pocket don't, knife I and don't eating know. the pieces? He might have had a, a, a pocket full of Civil War bullets on him. I have no idea. Mm. This is, that, that's how he sounded in my mind. Sure. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I saw that gator. And he goes, oh, I've been taking pictures of it because it was in the other pond the other day. Now, is he Indian? I'm getting like kind of a can't quite like a Native American vibe. Can't from quite you? tell. Is that not nobody really maybe? knows? Can't quite tell. Um, I'm not going to judge him. I'm not going to put him through that. You know, I don't. Very I'm dances, not going to ask I'm him for his. I'm getting like a dances with wolves. Well, I'm not going to you kind know, of feeling s- Tatanka. Co- I'm not going to swab him out. You know, and uh, submit it to 23 and Me. I'm not going to 23 and Me the guy. You know, I'm just, just saying your out. impression, your the way that you're very Tatanka. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Very like, Tatanka. I'll dance with wolves. Very too. like Chris, very, very uh, Costner after he was ingratiated. Again, I'll dance with wolves tonight, James. Sure. I'm not afraid. Gosh, and, what uh, a good movie, huh? And so he pulls out his phone. Great movie. Ugh. You know, his, his, uh, his cock got cut from that movie. A little story that. Um, really? I told you, his dong's that been TP, cut from that movie. That TP uh, sex scene? Yes. Hot. Yeah. yeah. Hachi. Yeah. Machi. Um, but the old man then was just like, wait, wait. And he pulls out his cell phone. This fucker has like 800 pictures of the alligator and like, oh, okay. On an Android. Up. Android takes good pictures, man. Uh, Look, I'll give it to the Android. The I will. Element, right? I know. <laughs> Every time somebody shows me a picture of myself or otherwise, I just go, dang. Yeah. iPhone. It's always like, I'll put a filter on it. I'll brighten it up. Like. It's never, I'll never see the picture as is and be like, yep. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's an Android. It's like the Android does the color magic. for you. Yeah. It's magic. It's a great phone for, for taking pictures and taking pictures And that only. is it and then just throw it right in the ocean. In the garbage yeah. can. So mm-hmm. homeboy starts swiping right, you know, 
like he's at fucking it's a picture of his dick. And yeah, he's, like, he's yeah, got an off there. weekend at Fort Bragg, and I'm like, God damn it, man! I was like, Do you have any pictures of of your grandkids or anything? Like, nope, or is it just this, gator. just the gator? <laughs> 800 pics of the of the gator later and i'm like do you have any pictures of your grandkids? that's what i said i was like do you have any nope, pictures of your grandkids just the goes, gator. Nope, just the gator and he like just keeps it. moving it because it was like my grandson's 28 and i was like oh, oh all okay. right well. we're not gonna take a picture of him in a bonnet yeah or at it, working at office depot or yeah, whatever, yeah you know put putting a chair together like <laughs> yeah. all right cool brother so uh i was like look man i got a I got to hop on down the bunny trail. Get but, out of this combo. Yeah. Yeah. But all this was, Been there. All this was rad, and I appreciate everything you do or have done for society. And uh, bounced on out of there. Uh, just spill a little on yourself. Yeah. Get a nice dress on, Jabes. Thanks. Yeah. I might be able to go out on the town tonight. Well, we're recording on a Friday night, which I dig. I dig a lot. Um, I like I it, can too. drink. I can drink, drink, drink. And uh, like re- it. really get my beak wet, like that gator. Sure. Uh, get get my beak wet. Mm-hmm. Um, but first and foremost, we got some sponsors, Javes, who put this whole shit wagon on the air, obviously. We do. And we love all of them. Here we go. There's the big news. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is our new chief sponsor. Oh, out with the old, in with the new. Look, it's all cyclical. It is. But it is. Ghost Bed is just, I don't know. There are people. There are peeps. There um, are peeps. There are peeps for the year. They're signed on as our chief sponsor for the entire year, and we're stoked to have them. Um, look, both of these shows keep getting bigger and bigger. Uh, I talked about this on, we've talked about this on, on Drinking Bros with Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, they've... They're expanding, they're growing, um, and they are going, they're moving on to bigger and better um, well, shows. They just, I, look, to be full disclosure. Bigger and better, but yeah. No, 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 I, to full disclosure. I, they, I don't think they can be doing content like this anymore. And that's the deal, and I think that they have said that a couple times. And yes. That we're all still friends, we all hang out, but when your company and any, I don't know this because I don't have that. I, I don't aspire to be in a corporate setting, but anyone that is, yes, you know that there are certain things that you just can't do. And you sacrifice, can't say you and, sacrifice yeah. that so that your company can grow. And, and that is, you know, their choice. And it's probably the right one. Yeah. And you Love know, them. for the audience, uh, and this, this is again, why we chose someone like Ghostbed is, uh, out in Hollywood, there was a few of us actors uh, who were friends. And, and I say a few because, you know, out of all the movies I've done, I'm only really genuinely close with a handful, right, of yeah. actors. Because they're all fucked up. You know this. Yeah. And uh, As Cro- a rule, they suck. Yeah. Clint Crawford and I obviously are besties and, and right. Christian Kane. And it's like one of our, the things we we're most passionate about and we did a lot of charity work for was, was veterans. Yeah. And veteran-owned companies and things like that. Uh, when we got together and did Range 15, it was for me, I, I didn't know any of those guys. Um, and they ended up being my best friends for life right. with Jared, Evan, Matt, and Rocco. And still are. Don't still are. Be, we talk don't, every, there's not, a day, not, a, yeah, not yeah. a day that goes by that we don't talk uh, or 80 times a day. Um, with that being said, um, when we did Range 15, that's how we met. It was a veteran backed movie. And uh, I was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm in. I'll, I'll fucking do it. And then we ended up becoming best friends. And then we did a podcast together. Again, reaching out to veterans, helping people. This show, same thing, man. Uh, we try to get veteran-owned companies on the show um, or people who you know, are heavy in, involved, heavily involved in that community. And uh, I think with Black Rifle, I think this is the right move for them. And I think by splitting it up with the podcast and the Black Rifle and all this stuff, that's how you can really connect with the most veterans and help the most people around the world. And it would be selfish of us as friends, as shows, uh, to say, no, guys, don't, don't try to make this the biggest company you can possibly make it in the world. Right. And I think once a company gets to a certain level, podcast marketing, you know, They've just moved so far past it. But with people like Ghostbed or these smaller companies that are, you know, starting up great stuff, great brands, yeah. they need to get 
you know exposure exposure and they need to get out there and 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 so it's sort of like when you say out with the old and with the new it's like out with the people that have like they've gotten what they can from what our podcast can do for them and their own podcast can do for them right and now it's time to let someone else grow their company to that level yeah using this platform correct and uh, and other podcasts and stuff but still the the realm of getting out to people and their customer service is great their product is great and I, look, using I, it up into this point it it made sense when they wanted to do it to be like absolutely not one person we've ever talked to has been unhappy with it with hasn't Ghostbed. been completely stoked about it no. yeah so it was a big yeah. it was a big decision and you know full disclosure there was a bunch of companies who had reached out uh, and made offers to to be the, the chief sponsor of the show and drinking bros but as far as like a just consistently happy customer base i think Ghostbed was the best it was as the best far as it, like it, yes. everyone that was reaching out we're like i'm not that the other ones weren't but we just didn't have you know the experience that we did with Ghostbed, which was just i mean we've been with them for how long now as a sponsor over two years at and this point not one time yeah has someone been like hey man and they're look went to ghost bed and yeah, yeah, it's exactly. always just like uh, awesome. the, the, the other, and the other thing I I love about them is if you go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, there is they give you reviews of the listeners of our show, of drinking bros, of listeners who who are, you know, genuinely that's why that your URL exists. Yeah. Is they've genuinely used the product and said, Hey man, I I love this or you know, here's what I think about this product. So that way you're getting it from people who listen to the show are like-minded like us and not strangers or fake reviews or, or whatever. And when we, when you and I sat down at the end of the day, we had, I think it was down to like five or six companies. And, um, both of us at the same time were like, all right, great. It's, it's ghost bed. Um, there was no other real option. Um, It's such a big purchase. Um, that to have such a big purchase and such, a specific thing to each person that it's crazy that every single person was satisfied, if not more satisfied Yes, with so, the product. So that alone, for me, that's one of the only things that matters. I'm sure there's other things that should. But. And, and, and obviously what they do for military and first responders, yeah. um, because that, that is a big portion of our audience. Um, here, it's about 50%. Drinking Bros is about 80%. And they're offering a 15% off deal if you were military or first responder. Forever. Um, and when you check out, that's what it is. And uh, if you're you know, a regular human like myself, they've got a bunch of amazing deals. But uh, these guys, man, this was the, the company we felt most confident in. And that, and you know, no matter what, nobody would be screwed over. And, uh, you know, Black Rifle, you will be hearing them on like Sean Hannity and Rogan. And uh, I mean, the biggest shows on the planet. And maybe because the show it's, down the line every once in a while. Like, yes. you know, they're, which, I, look, like I, I said, we're we would all love to still... have them back. And, uh, you know, we're all still be fries together in this, in this in whole endeavor thing. So we're yeah. all happy for each other and we're all helping each other. So and it's great. It's good. And it's great. As and we have been. a million things coming on down the line with Black Rifle and uh, uh, in real life. Um, and then Matt's book comes out. Thank you for your service, which is on, you know, available for, for pre-sale right now on Amazon. So like. There's a million things we're all best friends and working on together forever. And uh, we are super grateful uh, for Black Rifle for being our chief sponsor for the last year. And we're unbelievably grateful uh, to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros for being our chief sponsor this year. It is a product that uh, you will love as much as us. And again, we've had them for two years for a reason. And and it was time uh, for them to shine. And we love them, yeah. and we're super, super stoked to have them. So thank you, Ghostbed. Um, uh, to the other companies out there who were who were vying for it, like I don't really know what to say other than it all comes around. It does. It, like I, I just this was the one we felt most confident in. Uh, so I, you know, we love Ghostbed, and that was that. Uh, next up, we've got. Strikeforceenergy.com. Day one. Day one homies. Day one. Um, they're blowing up too. I know, they're blowing don't up too. get it twisted. They, but... might, they might be on their merry way as well. We don't know. But listen. <laughs> 
No, they're that would be completely up to them. Uh, I, but obviously, look, in in a real circumstance, like with Black Rifle, it was such a fast uh, ascent for those guys. Like, and it's amazing what, what they've been able to do, and it's fucking crazy. And it's kind of because of you guys, so I'm sure you know. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, why yeah. the other companies are like, hey. Uh, can we get a shot at on one of these shows? These, yeah, like, whatever you guys are doing over there. Your uh, your listeners kind of are strike awesome and yeah, and, and support exactly. and strike like strike. You take strike force, right? Like this is real shit, man. I mean, I'm look, I'm drinking now, so I don't, I don't really give a fuck. I'll just let it fly tonight. Um, with strike force, it's the same way where it's it's such a great product and a superior product that you're like this this company will blow up too. I, yeah. I it's in what twelve hundred. I think it's in 1,200 7-Elevens now, right? Yeah. So th- I'm sure that they will be on that echelon too soon. And it's just like, all right, great. Um, fantastic. While they're here, thank you. And it's amazing. Uh, but go out and get StrikeForceEnergy.com. I'm, I got a, I got the... They got the cup. They got. A, I got a little shaker. Nice. Drinking out of that today. I, I, uh, I got some grape in here. They got original lemon and orange. And uh, 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Boom, boom. Pop a couple squirts in and go to go to strikeforceenergy.com. Type in the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Uh, next up, we've got straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? it? Yikes. <whistles> that's uh, a ring-a-ding-ding on that one, Jabes. Sure. Right in my dong hole. Oh, it went all the way down. Oh, yeah. Reverberated, if you will. Into my dong hole. Straightrazors.com is everything you need to be a real man in this life to shave. Shave in pregnant bushes. No, yep. don't do that. For more than 40 years. Still I talked, don't. I talked to Luke Webster, the owner, that. and I said, hey, Luke, how long uh, have you guys been in the bush shaving industry for preggers? Mm-hmm. And uh, he said 40 years. Okay. So, um, and, but he also said, I'm not a mathematician or a doctor. Smart. Or a scientist. Or an aardvark salesman, um, or, or a haberdasher, a high school graduate. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, hit up Luke Webster and ask him though. But uh, I love his products. Uh, Smolder. He's look. They're all those guys are all veteran. Like too. It's great. Uh, Smolder aftershave is my end all be all. Uh, they they're the shaving kits. Father's Day is coming up. You can get them engraved. TSA took mine. Those motherfuckers. But uh, you can get them for yourself. Beard oils, shampoos, conditioners, again, every shaving product you need as a man in this life. You can be a man or a pregnant woman. Just get your straight razors that can. No? It's gorgeous. All right. All right. It's gorgeous. Uh, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. And again, new book out, Matt Best. Thank you for your service. Amazon, pre-order that shit now. I know I said it again. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's real good. It's real good, that one. Uh, how are you feeling, Japes? You look nice. Oh, thank you. You look beautiful. You're you ready to go out in town tonight. Our, our new set is almost ready. Our new set is almost ready. So I'm not quite in celebratory mode, yes. but we have gotten week one of shooting and working in there. So I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Yeah, man. I feel real positive about it. Um, no, hiring Holy workers and doing all that shit. Yeah. I, look, we've started a media company and it is because uh, we're, we're looking to we're looking to have some other podcasts. Yes. Join us. Right. Yes. And um, we've started a media company. If you, if you go to our YouTube channel, it's all combined now with Drinking Bros and Ross Patterson Revolution. That's for a reason. Uh, your mom's house is doing it. A lot of companies are doing it. Spotify's buying up a lot of media companies these days. We have, you know, uh, combined close to 7 million listeners now, and it's, it's time. It's time to do that. Uh, but that, that is a bitch of a process, man. Hiring and the paperwork, the legalities, the people. You've been staining things for 30 years, I feel like. It's the first time I've seen you clean, actually. Yeah, exactly. In maybe two or three weeks. And even then, it's still a little bit residual. Um. But it's it's fun. It's it's uh it's been a lot of work. Um, but we've added more shows, and everybody's amped about that. And they're like, "Oh shit, you guys are doing like seven a week now." And it's like, "Hey man, uh, we know you. Everybody out there listens to podcasts, so um, and we're, we're trying, trying to, to give have you. Uh, something for everyone." 
Yes, correct. So Across little... the board. You were on uh, fake news on Drinking Bros. I know, you that were great. Was fun. You were great. It's so funny, man. You look very similar on camera to Christina Applegate. So, so a lot of people were tagging you as Veronica Corningstone today. Which I've gotten a million times. <laughs> I mean, constantly. But I told you that one time she was at a bar that I was at and she had just come from some it was yeah, yeah, yeah. this dive bar that's next to where they had Did you did you gallus. see her? Did you run into her? Saw her. She was like I mean gorgeous. Right. In this like red gown because she had just come and she's fucking cool so she came to the dive bar next door yeah. to drink in her gown which is exactly what i would do yeah and um i was standing next to her like this and my friend like i said took a picture it was like my face probably just right off of uh, some bartending job and her right here and it was just like see I don't look anything like her. Do you know what I mean? Like, do I look like Christina Applegate? I guess, unless we're next to each other. And right. then you're like, mm, yeah. 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 Nice yeah. try, James. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's gorgeous. Stunning. No, I, 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 but it's just like any famous person because of the money that they have to take care of themselves. They're just I know. stunning. I know. You go, oh, I get it. Yeah. But I feel like anyone, if you have that kind of, money for hair and makeup and work done and all this whatever and just being yeah. able to be live not that stressed of a lifestyle work out for your job yeah. i'm sure anyone could look glowing and amazing right yeah 100% um that look there's been two show stoppers that stopped I like to tell myself stopped that. a room for me uh in hollywood where it was Gwen Stefani where yeah. an entire room stopped yeah. of i think it was 3 or 4000 people in yeah. an award show and, and I was just like, oh, oh, oh my God, Gwen Stefani. I don't know what she's, what deal she's made mm -hmm. uh, the devil, with yeah. the devil or whoever, but um, she hasn't aged. She hasn't done anything. And the, it was one of the, the, it was the only time where the man and woman match, because she was married to Gavin Rossdale. Oh, God. The Talk two of about them, the two of them walked in. Every man and woman looked at each other and we were just like, oh, well, we're not better than either of exactly. these two like, fucking that's people. That's the perfect match. Yeah. It, well, it was, you know. <laughs> I don't know what, what happened with Do you know them. the name of uh, his band? What? What's that? No, nah, just can you say it out loud for the audience? I forget. It's on the tip of my tongue. Bush. Oh, man. You take a straight razor to that Bush. <laughs> Um, from streamers.com. No, so I, the two of them walked in, and it was just like, oh my god. Sure. Um, and then uh, this, this, uh, this one, uh, the other one was Heather Locklear, but I, I think I told this story before. And really? yes, but it was uh, I would say, but it was two thousand one. So B in the D. Take uh, take That's it for what it's worth. Um, yeah, back in the day. And I, I again, I don't know if I told this story on this show or another show. You whatever. probably have. Probably have at this point. Like everybody knows. Um, but I was a fucking waiter at, I think it was 2000. It was 2000. I was a waiter and uh, Dennis Miller and Jay Moore were in. I was still in high school. Yeah, you were. You were. Uh, I'm only a couple summers older than you. Obviously, and everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, but, but Jay Moore and Dennis Miller were there. And uh, uh, it was just the two of them. And when she walked in, like they had gone to the bar. It was like a break during... I think it was the Emmys. That's what it was. It was a break yeah. during the Emmys. And uh, she'd walked in by herself and everybody, like all the wait staff was just like, oh my God. Was, we were working the governor's ball. Okay. She's like, oh my God. And uh, Jay Moore and, and Dennis Miller were there. And uh, Dennis Miller's one of my, my faves. And Oh yeah. And he goes, the two, just hearing the two of them go back and forth about Heather Locklear, they were just like, Jesus Christ. I was like, it's almost like she's fucking frozen in time. She's right. a man. Have you ever seen a woman that beautiful? Right. Have you ever seen a fucking woman that beautiful right, walking? Right. It's almost as like she's on a fucking magic carpet, like that type of shit. And you're just like, I died laughing, you know, behind right. the, the thing. And I was, but I got caught up in the moment too. And I was like, oh, like I, I get it. Fucking a. Yeah. yeah. And then you flash forward to now where she's, you know, in a psych hold and a fifty-one fifty, and you're like, whoopsie. Did it make her hotter at the time? Probably. I don't know. Fifty one fifty, that hot? Yeah. I mean, I, I you're I, not trying to marry her. I think. Well, Tommy Lee did. You know, and that's Tommy that was a perfect Lee. match. That was the match made in heaven. Um, that and I, well, both of the both of his marriages were perfect. Heather Locklear and Pamela Anderson for him. 
Oh. That's perfect. He had a type for sure. Mm. <laughs> no? You don't think Heather Locklear and Pamela Anderson? Heather are- Locklear is straight class, homie. Um, where Pamela Anderson is not, but that's a, it's two different girls where you're just like, all right, cool. I want the rich girl from the valley. I want the, the prom queen. And then you want the fucking whore, like the, you know, the porn star. Right. It's two but different I thought, types. Oh, okay. I thought Heather Locklear was like, I mean, clearly she is it, problems. She's been problems for a long time. So I don't know what you're talking about, about all class, but back in the day. I, back she? in the day, she was grace, class, elegance. That look, go you go scan through her shit. It'll it'll shock your mind. Where you're just like, oh man, she was like the lady. Um, I by the way, I love that you're chugging that age factor. Uh, they've got a bunch of new flavors. Those guys, they fucking sold out the other day. <laughs> they sold out. Are we getting? Some? I talked to Xander. Yeah, and I was like, yo, man, are we get any more age factor water? Like we're if it's good enough for Colton, we're Jones, and he goes, uh, it's there good was for me. There was a, a like a. a, a a group of stores, yeah, exactly. Colton's been drinking the shit out of that. The Bachelor. There was a group of stores in LA that bought every fucking case they had out, which is great for them, but, you know, that's what happens. Bad and, for us. Yeah, that's what happens when you have a smaller company that's already blowing up. Pop this back out and put it on the set? Or no, what he'll, we'll get some more eventually. What we'll do you get, reckon? We'll get, we'll get some more. I talked to him today. We'll get, we'll get some more. <laughs> but he think? was just like, yo, man. So... You know, it's funny because like a bunch of celebrities, like with all of this shit, you, they, you send it out, you kind of give out free samples or whatever, right? But your company starts to get big and you're like, oh, fuck, I actually need it to sell, <laughs> right? That's kind of the H-factor deal. And they owed, I'm not going to say who the celebrity was. It was a big celebrity, but they owed this celebrity like cases or whatever because he drinks it and posts about it and all this other shit. Okay. And um, the, my buddy, Xander, who's, who's one of the owners in that company, is like, Yo, dude, I had to go to the store that we sold all the H Factor to, buy it back myself. Uh -uh. And he goes, yeah, in like a disguise and then ship it out to the other thing. And I was like, how much? He's like, dude, I bought out everything. It was like $1,000 or whatever. Really funny. And I like, that's LA and that's the hustle. Um, And that's, you know, I like to see shit like that. Uh, that's why we like companies like this. But, exactly. Uh, it's it's it was a really funny story, and it was just it was a cool moment between two bros. Where I was like, "Hey, man, I'm proud of you." Champagne problems at this point. He goes, "Right?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Um, especially because they're banning plastic in in all of these cities now. Do you see that? Yeah. San Francisco is now banning plastic. So like plastic water bottles and all this shit, which is like, jing jing for H factor plastic. Banning plastic bottles. But they're okay with. RV people shitting in the street, lining the streets and dumping their shitting in the streets. Yeah, gray water. Since and... we're since we're on this topic, by the way, um, of small companies blowing up and then not knowing what to do. Uh, when you re- when you reach a black rifle status, you know, and you're like, all right, cool, we've got enough inventory and all this other stuff, right? Because um, everybody goes through it. Every company goes through it at some point. Mm-hmm. You blow up, and then you're like, oh fuck. I didn't have enough because I couldn't buy enough inventory. So it's mm-hmm. not sitting in a warehouse somewhere. That's when you go to Shark Tank. Hi, Shark. Exactly. A hundred percent. And I, by the way, I got hit up from, this is no lie. I got hit up from somebody on Shark Tank four weeks ago and four or five weeks ago. I, I want to kind of keep it vague. And he goes, hey, man, I really want to come on the show. I was on Shark Tank or whatever. And I was like, cool, man, to talk about his product or whatever it was. And sure. I was like, we can do it, but it's a sponsorship, you know, and it's X amount of money. And right, it was just right. Like, I was on a fucking Shark Tank, and I was like, look, the reason why everybody goes on Shark Tank is because they need They need money. Shit, yeah. And I was like, hey, man, we've got to pay people for all of this shit. And uh, Yeah. Anyways, um, the the shocking one, and this is is an insider tip, was uh, everybody's been eating these Impossible Whoppers, right? The Impossible Burger. The Impossible Burger, and, and by all accounts that I've heard, unless you've heard differently, it's amazing. Yeah. I haven't heard a bad word yet, right? Mm-hmm. That being said, no one else has either, apparently. And they've they, the the company who makes those fucking burgers sold out. So, did you get that from our food guy in the neighborhood? I'm not saying who I got it from. Oh, okay, so I sold out. I have an inside track with as well, yeah. And that's what he said because the girls in the neighborhood were be were like, I guess we got to try this Impossible Burger. Can you get it for us? Because he like supplies all the restaurants in town. Yeah, and he's like, I would, but I can't get them. They've been out of stock for blah blah blah, and they're you know. 
That's funny, man. And I'm like, really? Yeah, that's what happens. So, But I'm not a vegan, so it's like there's no point in me trying to dress up an impossible burger yeah. when I can... When I'm fine with having, if I want to go healthy, I'll be like grass fed, super organic beef sure. instead of whatever the hell is in an impossible burger to make it taste like a real burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For vegans, I'm sure it's amazing, right? I, you, but why you know, do we need to try it? I'd like to give it a go. Just, to, just to I, see. I just want to see. Yeah, because there is some things in life where uh, there's very few that I don't mind or I don't taste the difference. Mayonnaise. I do not know the difference between regular and light. If you put that on a sandwich, I'll never fucking know. Um, but there's a handful of there's things not a in lot this of difference life. Difference between those two. I mean, but it's it says the calories and all the other bullshit. So like, yeah, I don't really know. Yeah. Um, there's a handful of things in this life where I'm like, all right, great, that's rad, and that's not. It's not very many for me personally. Name one other one. Um, Coke Mayonnaise, Zero. Coke Zero. Coke Zero I get down on where it's just like, all right, cool. If you throw me a Coke Zero, I don't, I don't really mind it. Now, if you throw me a Diet Coke, I fucking know. Or I'm just like, ugh. Okay. Um, but I don't drink a lot of soda anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, shit. I can't even name the last time I had a soda, to be honest with you. Me neither. Uh, if I'm drinking, I'm drinking and I'm throwing Strike Force and shit in there or whatever. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, there, again, a couple products. That's why I want to try this. It'll be like, all right, eh, we'll give it a gozies, you know? See how it is. Yeah. I don't mind those bullshit crackers you bring home sometimes. Which one? I don't know. Some They're like 90 all grain. grain wheat, yeah. whatever the shit They're they good, are. right? If you put stuff on them. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't mind that bullshit. So, like, it, it's possible. You know? Do I want to do it? No. It's, I don't want to do any of it. It's not impossible. It's possible. I, I don't want to do any of it, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, you got, the, you got the babysitter dominoes tonight and some, some garlic knots. Yeah. I could... But fuck that whole thing in oh front God, of when you. When I opened up that, Come the on, garlic knot, dude, like swimming in the garlic, man, jizzy thing. I was like, Ooh. I know, that's it, that's it. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the good life. Welcome to the good life. They should, it all each over box me. of Domino's should have a trip wire with "Welcome uh. to the Good Life" in there. Um, and I'm, by the way, not sponsored by them. I made that that uh, post on Facebook the other day. And people, oh, that's right. Now, people now flipped this, out. And now people, people are really like, like, hey, man, are you sponsored by Domino's? I can fucking promise you this. If we're sponsored by Domino's, you're going to see me wearing gold. Like, sure. I'll be, I'll be dripping, dude. Right. Tip, 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 tip to the jewelry store. I don't like telling you guys to listen to other podcasts because you, you should only be listening to this one, right? Right. But Theo Vaughn's oh, I, with interview Riff with Riff Raff is, great. is probably one of the funniest interviews or just like conversation between two fucking weirdos that I've heard in a long two time. Two fucking weird rednecks. And that are I love so bo- by the way, similar. I love both of them. I follow both of them. So I'm saying this I in a beautiful way. Right. But when they're talking, you can't tell which one is. If either any of them are or fighting off each other, or if it's real, yeah, who did it first? Because no. they clearly are so similar, right? Comedy style, everything that you're like, who who did it first? Do you know what I mean? I, so here's my thing with that because I, I I love both of them and I follow both of them. We've tried to get Theo on They're the great. show numerous times. Um, I I'm confident he man, will be you on at some point. Being in a fucking one rollerblade. Uh, you know, and you're just like, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love all I'm of, confident he'll be on him. at some yeah, point. Same. I love, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. his whole shit. I love Riff Raff, by the way. I follow Riff Raff as well. And who's now Dale D'Antoni, um, which is even more hilarious. I just love it so much. Um, but his whole shit is, both of theirs, is, is hilarious and awesome and ridiculous and it's new. Uh, if you're asking me who I think is real and not real in that world, um, I think they're both unique in their own rights. Where Riff Raff, who's now Dale D'Antoni. Sure. Um, I think. As you do. <laughs> I, I think his whole thing may have been a character, may not have been. Riff Raff? I yeah. think so. Yeah, I think so. But to what degree, I guess it's. it's I don't know. Where, when he's where I talking, think it seems Theo very Vaughn's just natural. a real dude. He's a real dude. He really is from, you know. Louisiana, and, Louisiana, yeah. low, you know, low income family, Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. that's real, I think. So uh, 
I guess when Theo Vaughn does it, yeah, it seems more real and riff rap. But when riff rap is talking, it's. I love. By the way, love his new song. It's with Chief Keef. It's called Tiptoe. Um, is that new? It's been out for a while. No. Well, here's the thing. He's been on his. If you follow his Instagram, mm-hmm. he's been teasing it out for a while, and then oh, the fucking okay. and then song it finally, finally came okay. out. And I was just like, Jesus Christ! So I was like, I feel like it's been out for a long time. But. No, probably, probably, probably a month or two tops. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, I mean, but dude, he was been teasing this thing forever. Where you're just like, mm-hmm. yo, it was one of those things though. When I when it finally came out, I had already heard it like 900 times, and I thought it was a famous song, and I was just like, Ugh. way to go, riff raff. I think they both uh, love. WWF like wrestling so culture. I. Yeah. So I think that you know building characters that are based on you but kind of making yourself larger than life that's very wrestling. Yeah. Culture, brother. right? So and I told the and whole world that you were a prima donna Hogan yeah and you are. I wish I could be macho man. Uh, Randy Savage. A lot of people said that with the hair and the glasses and the and the whole shit sure. that I've been going through. You're on your way. Summer Swayze, obviously. Summer Swayze. We made those t-shirts. Those are fucking crushing, by the way. Buy get the. I I can't wait to wear those goddamn things on the show. They're not they're not ready yet. Um, they'll be ready next week. Summer Swayze led by Iron dot com. Go get them right now before they they sell out because everybody's like, yo, are these gonna sell? I was like, yes, they are. Um, but I love these goddamn things. But this whole shit right now, you want to talk about getting wrapped up in a character? I actually like this hair. Mm-hmm. I've had a few drinks now. Again, we can, we can talk real about it. I actually like this hair. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Every day. I get out of the shower. I throw a little activator in it. Boom. It's ready to go the next day. I feel great about it. Okay. Your thoughts? I like it now. What I don't like is when you've got the activator and it's like soaking wet. And... But you have to do that to keep, it, to keep a, some type of shape. So I like when I like when the moose is brushed out. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yes, so do like I. That. So yeah. do I. But uh, you so got a second day. Second yeah, yeah, day. yeah, yeah. But you gotta, I mean, I will say this with anyone's hair. I like my hair second day. I like ev- pretty much everyone else's hairstyle. See, I like second day. I, I was a first day guy. So first day, like I was like, all right, great. I know what my shit looks like. It's right. It's tight. It's going all night. Um, and I'm I'm amped about it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a big second hair day guy. And then this this popped up and I was like, ooh, right. dip, dip, dip. Man, I wish we could just cut that in the whole episode. Um, I know it'd be a bitch for you, wouldn't it? There, there's things that I suggest and you're in the back of your mind. You're like, man, I'm the one that's got to edit this, you Fucker. motherfucker. Yep. Don't you say that one more time. No, I like. Put in uh, Elizabeth Berkeley saying she needs her fucking Adderall. I'm so excited. I'm oh, so excited. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm just starting throwing in things that you've got to not I'm put in. So I'm scared. scared. All of a sudden, there's like a hundred Tarantino but cuts in this episode. Those were, that was diet pills, I think, right? Uh, I don't know. What and then she like slumped. She, she went from like heroin to diet. It was like, Whatever she did, she did. Sure. You, you, let's talk about that Say by the Bell cast while we're on it, dude. Has anybody grown up to be hotter than that entire cast? No, it's insane. It's crazy, well, right? There's one. Who? Well, there's two. Who? Screech. Screech is Screech, man. Like that motherfucker okay. was never good looking. And then the Lisa. Well, Lisa Turtle bleached her skin, right? Well, she's uh, mentally. I don't give a shit about her mental. Like, right, but um, Britney Spears is mentally crazy, but you'd still fuck her. Like right. Lisa Turtle, I think put some. I think she, she didn't she bleach her skin. Was that she that was the did, thing? Right? But things happened once she kind of went crazy and medication and all this. So she like she's done some crazy she stuff. She was she's, fine as of a couple years ago, right? Hmm? Three or four years ago, she was fine looking. Fine. I don't know who you're looking at. But. Lisa Turtle? Mm-hmm. And I have to pull up a picture of Lisa Turtle? I mean, I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Like, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go into this. But A.C. Slater. God damn it. That Jesus. guy. Jesus. Looks better looking than he did in Mark fucking Saved by the Bell. Paul Gosling. Yes. Oh, wait. Is, is it Gosler? I think it's Gosler, right? Or Gosler? Is it, is it, it's okay. not Gosling. That's, that's Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah, sorry. Gosler. Sorry. Gosler. Come on, man. Sorry. Sorry. He is a uh, crush. Major crush. Yeah. Now, though. Yeah. Not on Saved by the Bell. Ah, so here, here's the deal. I'm looking at Lisa Turtle now, right? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so there's a couple of different things going on no, there, and we kind of just not. don't. I'm, I'm going to say what this is, because uh, this is what Sammy Sosa is going through right now. Uh, Lisa Turtle still looks like Lisa Turtle, man, but she's bleached her fucking skin. She's mm-hmm. white. Mm-hmm. Um, she cut off all her hair, which is never a good thing for a girl, but you can tell if she didn't bleach her skin, she'd look great. She would look great right now. I'm looking at a picture of her. That's serious. Okay. It's just the skin bleach. You can't get past okay. that. Same with Sammy Sosa. Pull up a picture of, of Sammy Sosa and, and her side by side if you're at home. That's what's going on. You bleach your skin and then, you know, it's crazy town USA. But uh, she's, she still would have had it had she not chopped she off her hair and couple, bleached her skin. Yeah. She did a couple interviews. Uh, uh, again, not talking about her mental status. Yeah, but that th- it, all goes, it all goes together. Looks. You go crazy, you start getting on meds, you start getting puffy, you start doing crazy shit to yourself, work-wise on your face, cut your hair off. Like, it all goes together. That's what right. I'm saying. Right. Well, I don't know. Man. Don't you come for me. Oh, uh, you can swear on this show. What are you, what are you tiptoeing around for? Tip, 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 tip. I wish, again, I wish we could cut that in the entire I know you episode. do, and I know you do, but we're on the rocks. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the rocks. With, with, uh, with Lisa Turtle, though. She would have played. They all would have played. Even Screech, man. I saw a picture of him the other day. Looks better than he did, at least. Sure. What I can't figure out with him is, how is your brother the coolest motherfucker on the planet, and then you're, you're fucking Screech? I think that's tale as old as time, isn't it? Ugh. Tale yeah, as old as it, time. Man. You don't have brothers, but tale no. as old as time, I think there's, there's always... A, a lot of the times there's that kind of going Man, on. your brother is in the Beastie Boys and you're fucking screech. And let's face it, the, M- Michael Diamond is, is not attractive either in the, in the no, Beastie Boys. But, but somehow he's, cool. he's more attractive because he's fucking Beastie Boy. he's a Beastie fucking Beastie Boy. Boy. Yeah. yeah. Man, you want to talk about a, a, a bad hand dealt in life, you know? Uh, you're screech and then you end up. You know what the weird one is for me is Urkel. Uh, Jaleel White, uh-huh. and I'll tell you why. Um, I get a I get a call from his manager one time, and they were like, "Hey, can you meet up with with Jaleel? He's got this script, and he's producing movies and trying to get into, into that whole side of the thing." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "Man, I don't have the phone." I was like, "Why is that? Why is that name so familiar?" You know, looked him up, Urkel. I was like, "Oh shit!" Right. I'm going to a fucking bar to meet with Urkel. Right. Um, read the script; it was great. He was great. Um, met up with him. He, he's really attractive now in real life. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yo. He's normal looking, like good looking And dude. a cool motherfucker. Yeah. And I'm like, God damn and it. And cool about it. Yeah. He'll definitely like do, I, I think for well, a while he no, wasn't. He's still not. And I, so I, I will say this. I was like, hey man, is, he is there any, are we tiptoeing around the Urkel thing? And they were like, yeah, let's mm. not, let's not do it. And uh, whatever. And it's one of those things where you debate when you meet them in real life about saying it of like, mm. hey man, you're like an attractive dude. Like I would sure. forget about the Urkel shit. Like that's right. all done. Um, but you can't. And mm-hmm. I didn't. And uh, yeah, I met, I met with him like twice and at like cool bars too. Not, not like super Hollywood shit. And he was a rad guy and super good looking. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. And he's still stuck on that thing. You still have his number? Or? Still stuck on the Urkel thing. Uh, I bet you I do. Yeah, for sure. Don't test me. You saw what, what happened last time. I know. I don't want bros. you to call him. I don't want you to call him. We, uh, that we, makes me really uncomfortable. Oh, boy. You were super uncomfortable, that show. And yeah, if you thankfully, didn't, I was if you just didn't, doing sound. Yeah, if you didn't listen to that episode of Drinker Bros, the Scalar Brothers, I called Steven Seagal live on there. It was really good. <laughs> I love them, too. <laughs> so do I. Their podcast is great. I'm, I'm not I'm a huge, huge fan of those guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do anything they want for the end of time. But we called... Steven Seagal live on air, and that was rad. We called OJ, o- OJ Simpson's old number live on this yeah, show. and it was his voicemail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all this shit is real. Uh, Jaleel White, though, dope dude. Really cool fucking guy. Um, so I, that sucks, man. When you see that happen to somebody, and you're like, ah, there's no way out of that. Mm-hmm. There's no way out of that. Like, in, in today's current climate, there's a, a girl that our kid likes. Um, that JoJo, mm-hmm. what's her last name? Siwa. Sawa. See, whatever. Um, I see her and I'm like, oh no, this is going to end up horrific for her. Um, it's going to end up I bad. I think she's, I think she's good. 
Oh, financially? Oh, I think she's... But no, but, here, but here, I mean, here's yeah, the thing. J- Jillia White's good. Screech right. Um, was good on money. I don't think that she wants to be an actress or anything like this. Really? N- no. I, she no, was, she went straight from being a dancer on Dance Moms. She was a host at the MTV... Yeah, no, because I'm of sorry, her the Nickelodeon YouTube, Awards. Uh, because yeah. of her YouTube fame. Like, mm. she'll still do appearances like that, but she is straight up from beginning to end. She was in a reality show, yep. Dance Moms. She was a little kid that would oh, dance. I didn't know that. And then she I just started that. doing YouTube stuff. No shit. And used the little bit of fame that she got from that to blow up this YouTube thing and has been doing YouTube the whole time and literally is prob- probably... A genius at it at this point. If we sat down with her, we'd be like, "Holy shit!" Probably. Like, there, so there was, there was, in, yeah. she is that machine, and she doesn't want to do anything else. I think if, at at the very least, she may just let her brands, because she has all these brands, Walmart, whatever. Right. Let her brands just make her money, and kind of as she gets older, hopefully, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Sashay out of it, maybe. Sashay out of it. I, I, I just, get it. There was there was a girl that. Uh, that I knew on the come up who, who was like that. Her name was uh, Lisa Nova. She was a big YouTube star. And she w- w- did con- like comedic videos and shit mm. like that. And impressions and things like that. One of the, like the very first YouTube stars that yeah. I remember. Mm-hmm. It was like her and like Jenna Marbles, I think, mm-hmm. was like the first two. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I ran into her in an audition. And it was for a, uh, like a comedy pilot, right? And uh, I was like, how is everything going? Like... Because uh, I was doing sketches like that on YouTube that were getting a lot of views, but I didn't put any effort or time or thought into it. Mm-hmm. Now it's all fucking YouTube. Like right, uh, right. I'm the dumb dumb, right? We're trying to get people to subscribe to our channel now. Um, and she was like, "It's cool, but I want to do like Saturday Night Live, or I want to do this or whatever." And 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 uh, she was like, "That's what I'm using this as, the springboard as, or whatever, right?" And uh, I was like, "All right, cool." Uh, she ended up get she so she ends up getting Mad TV. Oh, nice. Yeah, not SNL, but she got Mad TV. Huh. She was on for, I want to say a half a season or a full season. I forget, right? And then they kind of were, were done with that, you know, or whatever. And uh, she went back to YouTube. She was making videos full time. Her and her brother just started collecting other channels and, and built their own media company. Sold it for $1 billion. There you go. The day that, here's the interesting part. The day of the deal closed, never made a video again. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Imagine I guess. making videos every single week and then Ugh. that's it. Boom. That would be amazing. Boom. You're not doing it anymore. Like you're, you're done. You're all out. And that's it. That's One crazy. billion dollars. And Disney bought it. Um, so it, it turned into Maker Studios is what it was. And everybody knows what that is and, and all of that shit. But I, at the time, I think they had somehow acquired 55,000 YouTube channels, man. It was insane. It was absolutely oh insane. God. Yeah. And she was a boss ass bitch. And I heard she, the day they sold, she turned into like, like a VP or something of, you know, marketing or, or whatever it was for the, for the channel and everything else. And, and I was never made a video after that. I was like, God damn it, man. That's a crazy story. That's the dream, right? Mm. For her. You know what my, lo- I, I, man, again, I've had some drinks so I can open up and do whatever I want here. Um, my lawyer, one of my first entertainment lawyers ended up running Maker Studios. She became the fucking president of it. And I was just like, God damn it, man. And that was a long time ago. Anybody tells you that, again, this whole women shit of like, eh, women can't do it. No, they've been doing fine for a while. I've you're good. Telling, that's what I've been telling you. Yeah. You're good on all of that. Like, dude, you Lisa just have Nova. have to be a certain kind of got woman. Paid. Yes. And that's still true. It is 100%. It's still true. You cannot be a pushover. You cannot be nicey nice. No. Or those things that people are complaining about will happen. Yeah. But. I'll say, I'll say her name. Erin McPherson. She was a boss ass bitch, man. And uh, she cut a big deal for Clayne and I. She did a huge deal for us. And uh, walked into, you know, an all dudes club. C- cut a huge deal for us. And mm-hmm. it was one of those things. We met her in person. Clayne and I. And, and um, talked, you know, big game. We were like, all right, cool. Fuck it. Let's do it. And, dude, she, she rolled into these men and got the deal done. Nice. Um, when, when other dudes couldn't get it done, by mm-hmm. the way, we had, we had another cleaner. I had another lawyer before that. And, uh, this chick rolled in she was like, I'll I'll do this. And, uh, boss ass bitch. Nice. Yeah. 
Um, so it's been, it, it's 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 real and it's been going on for a while. But um, I think I I think Erin retired after that. She was just like I'm good financially. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, yeah. Because we're I know we're I know we're still friends on Facebook. Haven't I don't think she's posted in years and. All of them are all good. Where it's happy just like, to not do right? so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my We God. had this conversation tonight where we were like, hey, we're going out. We're going out with Anthony and Anthony Holloway tonight. And the days have been so crazy with lawyers and contracts and all this other shit for this company and everything else. And uh, X, Y, and Z lawsuits for movies and all this other shit. That's. We said to ourselves, oh, my God, let's just leave our phones in the car tonight and not take it out. And then we're like, oh, wait, we've got children and a babysitter. And if something goes wrong, we're the asshole parents who are out doing shots Mm -hmm. and then come back to the car. And it's like, we you didn't give your consent for the amputation. So it went down. And you're just like, oh, no, no. Why? We had to. Yeah. Yeah. Really sorry. But you, you weren't there. You were doing. Uh, purple, you know, snooters at uh, yeah. some shithole bar with the Old Town Road playing on repeat. Is that your repeat. fear? Clearly, you had it that is. right on it is. on lock. Yes. Okay. I yeah yeah. I just he didn't have the consent. Okay. Look, it was gang greed. It was life or death. We didn't have your consent of right. the parents, so the babysitter made the call. And we had to amputate. And I was just like, what? Oh my god! And then you're looking at you know. Your credit card receipt from Beer Barrio the next morning, and you're sure. like, oh, fuck. Maybe that's where we should go. No, I'm going to Hell's Kitchen and Nights. I'm going to have some wangs up in this motherfucker. Uh, sometimes I just crave it, Jabes. I need it. I need it. My loins. My loins. Like my, you know? Look, if you're not careful tonight, Jabes, I'll throw you into that fucking pond where that alligator is, and then we can figure out who the real, All right. real hombre is. Try it. Um, Try it. Where are you at, though, tonight? What do you think? About? Wine, drinks, shots? You know what I do and how I do. (laughs) You're going to love this tonight. And what that means Uh, is... I forgot to tell you this. I drink one glass of red and I sip another glass and I... (laughs) And then I sip another glass. What's up? You're going to love this tonight. Okay. So, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, my co-host in Drinking Bros, comes over. We watched the Golden State game last night. Right? Okay. And he goes, hey, man, uh, we're going out tomorrow night. I was like, yeah, yeah, we're going out. We're going downtown, downtown Wilmington, which is a blast. And there's always, uh, in the summer, bands playing on the river, like cover bands playing on the river. And did you cool. check who it was? I did. And so, wait, you're going to love this. And this is why I saved it for you. Okay. So, I go, uh, he goes, who is it? And I was like, I was the Rolling Stones last week, cover band. And he was like, oh, that would have been dope. And I was like, sure. who is it this week? Thumb through, and I was like, oh, shit, it's the Beatles. And he looks at me, and he goes, fuck the Beatles. Thank you. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, are you serious? And he goes, you want to talk about the most overrated band? He goes, no lies. Do you tell him I agree? Yes. This was his direct quote last night. He goes, the Beatles are the Nickelback of the 1960s. And I died laughing. And then I said, you, sir, are very incorrect on that uh, assessment. Now, look, I'm not saying the Beatles were the greatest band of all time. I'm not. The sure. Rolling Stones are. Sure. But I would put the Beatles at number two, probably, for what they did for, for the world. So I get Stones one, Beatles two. I'm not going to take a shit on them. Calling them the Nickelback of the 60s was a little much for That's me. That's a little much. For me, I just think there's tons and tons and tons of other bands that are better. That's just me. Who, I, let's, uh, real quick, before we get, go off here, who are they? No. <laughs> no, and, and, and the reason why I'm asking, because I'm, I'm going to, there's a, there's a good. Britney Spears, Toxic, is better uh, than any oh, song. Oh, God. Better than any song that the Beatles ever wrote. Is that real? Fight that... me. <laughs> when that, right? Toxic. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Not one bit. I'm joking. Not one piece of that is real. <laughs> it's not even, that's not true. It's not a true thing. It's not a, it's... Nope. Nope. Not gonna. Not gonna even uh, entertain that Fight one. Fight me. Fight me. I hate that. It's my. It's my. One of my. That and if you love. What you do, you never work a day in your life. That and Fight Me are the two biggest quotes I hate seeing on Facebook and Pinterest and all that shit. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. 
Jabes, we're going to get to the revolutionary figure of the day, which is also going to be uh, spawned a quote that uh, people hate. Some people love it. I love it. Uh, our Lord and Savior, three years ago this week, passed. Harambe. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I'm gonna, now, this one, I'm going to need you to put the song at the end of the episode. Sure. Will do. Yeah. I made a song after Harambe died called We Are All Harambe. It went viral. Everybody and their mothers heard it. And then that, in turn, spawned everybody to take that song and make a bunch of fucking memes out of it, right? Sure. I was the dude on that one. And I'm proud of that, and I'm fine with all of it. But that magnificent beast had so much more to give in this life that when I'm reminded of his death, I am taken back to that day where he was trying to save the child. Yep. Not harm the child. And Instead of shooting the mother, they shot Harambe, the, the greatest gorilla of all time. I still go back and forth in my mind of why I wasn't there. Sure. And it hurts every day. Mm-hmm. Why I wasn't there. What could I have done? Yeah. Why wasn't I at the Cincinnati Zoo that day mm-hmm. when Harambe got taken from us? Filled with too many questions, not enough answers. Uh, that'll rattle around in my old jar of a brain for well, probably the rest of my life why I wasn't there. Um, I'm also wondering why the parents are still alive today. Yeah. Um, because I would have turned, if you're going to shoot Harambe, you should take, uh, check your six and then take out those parents, you know? Because yeah. those assholes are the ones that created all this chaos. And when this comes up, you know, the last week of May every year, it is tears and beers out of me. Sure. And tonight, I raise a glass for you, Harambe, you magnificent, beautiful bitch. I love you, and I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution, and here... Because we are all Harambe. Take a moment to yourself after you hear the song. Good night.